You know you need a new portfolio, but you're procrastinating. And that's because there are so many tough questions. What tool should I use? What should I put in the hero section? How should I present my work? Well, on today's video, we're gonna tackle all of these questions step by step so that you can finally take action, put up that new portfolio and win some amazing new clients. So here's what I'm going to do. We're gonna start off talking about what tool should you use. We're gonna cover three tools and talk about which is better for you specifically. And then we're gonna talk about how to start your portfolio. What should you put on the first section, the hero section, because if we don't get that right, nobody is gonna scroll down and continue to actually see our work. And third, we're gonna cover how to present your work and case studies on your portfolio. And we're gonna pepper everything with my 20 years of experience as designer and reviewing hundreds of designers portfolios and if you don't have time to watch the full video we have a complete guide downloadable with checklists below this video so make sure you're downloading let's get started okay so there are three tools that i want to show you for you to consider as the platform for your portfolio the first one is webflow if you've ever been on my channel you know that i love webflow webflow is basically uh, platform to build websites in general, not just portfolios. So I build all of my clients' website and our website using Webflow. And it's really, really enables you. It's really, really advanced and enables you to do custom work with interactions and basically do anything you want. Now, this is really great, but the con of this very, very powerful tool is that it has some learning curve. So if you really need a portfolio right now, maybe it's going to take you too long to use Webflow and learn how to use Webflow. However, that being said, they also have a bunch of templates for you to get started with. So that can make things easier for you. You can go here under template and they have portfolio templates. Some of them are actually free and you can get started with Webflow for free and then even publish your portfolio on a webflow.io. Um, domain so you can basically have a portfolio for free and it's pretty easy to get started so this is tool number one the second tool that i want to show you is called carbon made and this is a tool that was solely built for online portfolio for creatives so that's going to make things very very easy for you it's based on templates but they are really really well designed so this is a very kind of like simple drag and drop tool you can choose beautiful typography from beautiful layouts and templates, whether you're a graphic designer or a UX designer or a photographer or a 3D artist, they have templates for everything. So this is basically the easiest thing to get started with if you don't already have a tool that you're working with. This can be a really, really great way to get started. Um, this is not free. However, they will give you a free domain if you want kind of like a portfolio.site domain. Um, and you can get started with this on a free trial. So you can just build it and see if you like it and then only then pay for like the hosting. The last tool that I want to show you is called Simplice. And Simplice is basically also a dedicated tool for portfolio for uh, creatives. However, this is a plugin for WordPress. So if you are already familiar with WordPress, maybe you already have a website that's built on WordPress, then you can get this uh, template, you can get this uh, plugin, and then you can start working with it. And it has some really, really amazing templates and components to work with. It can also be very, very customized in terms of animations, uh, and it has some really, really cool features. So if you're a Webflow, uh, if you're a WordPress person, this is probably the solution for you. Again, I'm personally not a WordPress uh, person. I don't like setting up WordPress uh, myself. So for me, I'm not gonna be able to use this, but this is a really, really great tool for people who like and wanna work with WordPress. Uh, you only pay for this once. You don't have to pay a subscription like you probably should would with CarbonMade or Webflow. So this can be a benefit as well. Let's move into the second topic, which is what should be on your hero section. As I've mentioned earlier, the hero section is where you basically answer the question, whose website is this? What do you do? And why should I even consider working with you? Like what's special about you? What's unique about you? And I want to talk about a few things that you should consider. Let's see some examples uh, with things that you should take in mind in consideration. So the first website that I want to show you is this one from Basil. And you can see here that basically he has First of all, you can immediately see who this person is. So he has an image of himself, which I think, I personally think, you know, if you're a freelancer, uh, whether you're, you know, you wanna be a freelancer or you're right now interviewing to get a job and that's the goal of your portfolio, people are basically hiring you and buying you. You are in a way the service provider. So it's really important, I think, to see who is the person you'll end up working with. So it's really important to have a good photo of yourself. Um, and he's introducing himself. My name is Basil, I'm a freelancer. Now he specifically has two services. He's a 
web designer and a photographer. Um, and so note what we have here. We know who this website is. We can see that person. So two very important things. Um, we can also see some a bunch of logos here. Some of them you might know, like Audible and the other one. So that is what we call social proof. So immediately that helps to build credibility. Now the last thing that we have is a call to action, a button that tells you what is the next step that you need to do. At the end of the day, remember, you have a goal for your portfolio. It's not just to show your work. It's for them to hire you or reach out to you or you want them to take action. So you have to put a call to action. Now in this case, if I'm going to click you need a designer, then we're going to get into a specific portfolio just for the design. And it has basically the same components, only we don't have an image of him here because we already saw him. And this time he's basically saying, we have here graphic designer, web designer, web flow expert. So that kind of puts him in a category. And then he's basically giving us the value proposition, what's unique about him, impactful branding and high end web flow websites for creatives. Again, we have the logos, we have the call to action, let's start a project together. And we can already start seeing here, I'm going to talk about this uh, showing your work later, but we can already see a teaser of his work, which is really exciting. Let's see another uh, example. So this one is from Nikila. Uh, let me actually reload this because I think the intro here is actually not this. I want to show you the intro to the website. I think it's interesting because she states here, I'm a digital, I'm an animator, I'm an illustrator, I'm a brand manager. So she's always in already in the loading uh, animation, she's stating who she is. And now she is again, she doesn't have much of a let's say value proposition, but you can already see her vibe. And I also think that look how different the image here while we have here, like a uh, for Basil, we had like a really professional photo. Here we have a much more playful image of Nikila. And I think that's part of the value, right? Look at me, I'm fun to work with and look at the playful illustration. So that is nice. Uh, she does have a call to action, which is you can see when you're hovering on top of this, you have the contact, although I think it's a little bit too hidden. But that being said, it's still I think a good hero to present her her personality and the type of work that she is doing. The last example I will show you of a hero section is this one from Dennis. Uh, and let me reload this as well because he also has this nice animation with different languages saying hello to you. Now basically what we have here, the number one thing I think that you can see is super professional photo like high quality taken in a studio. So that already hints at the quality of the work uh, that you're going to get from him. And then he's also smiling. So he's friendly. So again, the way that he is explaining the uniqueness of working with him is with the quality and the, the vibe here, completely different vibe from what we've seen from Nikila, right? Now he is basically stating what he does freelance designer and developer um, located in the Netherlands, there is no direct call to action here, which I think is uh, a shame, but it's, it's still I think a very impressive kind of hero section that gives you and he is obviously coding a lot. So there are a lot of kind of like very nice micro animation that you can see here when you're hovering over stuff and the animation of the tech. So that puts us in the context of what he knows to do. And he kind of proves the quality of his work right off the bat. So now that we talked about the stuff that you need to have in your hero section, a description of what you do and what's different about you, perhaps an image of you and a call to action, let's talk about how to present your work. Now, a mistake that I see people do over and over again is they just take screenshots from their design software, whether it's Figma or XD or Photoshop or whatever, and they just put a screenshot on their uh, a screenshot of the design on their website. And I think that is a poor decision. Um, and I want to show you some examples of how you want to do this. So here as we're scrolling immediately, we can see a bunch of screenshots and though they are screenshots, they have a little bit of styling, which makes them look a little nicer, right? So they have these round corners and they have this drop shadow. So they're not just placed on top of you know, the image, they, they are a little bit more stylized. And I think when we're scrolling, we're getting to the actually last project. Now we can actually see the work in context right now. This is proper art direction of the work, right? Instead of just putting, you know, a screenshot of the app, 
it has some background. The background is in the color of the brand. We have multiple devices that help us see the work in context and we can see that here and here as well. This is super, super important for you to tease people into even before they get down into the uh, case studies. Let's see what we have here from uh, Nikhil. We scroll down and now we have this here we can see a project so that now we have some kind of an animation uh, and you can see what she did here you can read a case study and or you can actually go and see the the website and we have here as well now these are again these are not just screenshots these are the actual designs and some of them are being animated so they are placed kind of like in context it's not just you know, an export of a JPEG out of a design software. Uh, let's see what we have for Dennis. So for Dennis, when we're scrolling out here, basically, in a way, you can say this is just a screenshot. But again, it's placed within a rectangular that has some color. Uh, sometimes I think you can see here animations. No, maybe you can't see the animation, but it's well presented within a context. It's not just a screenshot it has a little bit of an art direction that puts this in context. Let's go ahead and dive into um, a case study and see what's important when you are creating a case study. So a lot of people focus on writing a lot about what we did here and before and after and the process and show sketches and stuff like that. Now, it's nice to show context, but remember, people wanna come here. Number one, people do not like to read a lot on the web. So be very, very succinct with how you write and use a lot of headlines because people are skimming. They're just reading the headline and then scrolling down. And what they're really interested in is seeing the final result. But as I said, let, so let's check out. This one is a case study uh, from Bezo. First of all, we're seeing the goal of the project. And I do think this is a good amount of text to describe the project. And we're already seeing the end result here. Now here it has, you can see it says scroll me. You can literally see the whole website uh, within this area. And now we're scrolling in here. And as I said before, instead of just placing screenshot, there is some art direction here, right? They're tilted a little bit, they're cropped. We have multiple views. Um, here again, it's on a little background with a drop shadow. And then there is the mobile version on top of it. So it just makes the presentation of the work itself a little bit more interesting, right? This is what we call art direction. They're not just placing the screenshot, they are presenting it in a nice way. Even though, again, these are screenshots, note again the details, round corners, drop shadow, make it a little bit more presentable. And when we're scrolling, sometimes he will break the feed within these images, which just helps you with context about the vibe of the project. Obviously, he didn't take these photos. These are not the design that he did, but it helps tell the story of this project. Uh, this one, again, I think this is really a great example. You see the festival and the app on top of it. So this is really a great example of how you make nice presentation. And to top it off to finish your case studies with, you know, a quote from your happy client, always a great idea. Now, in the end, very, very important, especially if you're doing projects that involve other people, whether you did it in an agency, you want to make sure to be very clear about what was your role in the project and give credits if other people helped you develop photography and whatnot. Let's see another one. Let's see an example case study from um, Nikila here. So I'm clicking on this. Now we have here, again, some kind of an intro here, an overview. To, to me personally, that's a lot of overview text. Uh, in general, I think she has a lot of text, but we're jumping right into the work. She is using animation, and I think a lot of people who are in web or UI design, uh, we're seeing the actual interaction and animations are very, very important. Um, so using animations or short videos is a great way to present your work. It's less boring. You can really see the work that you did there uh, as a designer. So I think this is a really, really uh, fun case study. The last note that I want to give you is this. Remember, your portfolio is basically your business card, right? This is the first impression that people might have of your work. So having the basic, the core fundamentals of graphic design, just making sure that the website looks good, good color scheme and good typography are super, super important because this is how people will immediately judge 
your website within the first five seconds. Uh, good imagery, obviously, as well. Now, if you don't hone those skills right now, if you feel like you don't have solid graphic design skills, don't try to do it on your own. The platform, all of the platforms that I show you have very good templates and kind of like design decisions made for you so you don't have to make all of the decisions yourself. I know as designers, we want to customize everything. But if you're not very strong with graphic design, sometimes maybe it's easier to start off with good design decisions that somebody else did for you and just make sure that you have somebody take a really good photo of yourself and you make sure that you present your work, you create the art directed uh, pieces and create the case studies in a way that looks really, really good and uh, presents you successfully. I hope this was uh, educational for you. We have other videos here that cover in depth more portfolios for you to learn from. And as I've mentioned, we have the complete guide for you to download below this video. I will see you on the next video. Peace out.